How's it going everyone? Welcome into Keystone Academy. If you guys watched our most recent video, you know that we just recently purchased the Sony a7 IV and we absolutely love it. Uh, so today I just kind of want to walk you guys through my process for how I color grade S-Log3 footage shot on the a7 IV. Now, I did shoot it on the a7 IV, but all of this will apply to any S-Log3 or really S-Log2 footage. So if you shot on an a7S3 or an FX3, this will apply to you as well. And now I will be using Adobe Premiere, that's my editing software of choice, but most of these concepts are gonna be pretty generic and you can apply them to any editing software you use. So I was recently on a work trip down in the Bahamas, which was an awesome experience. Uh, and we had a day off and of course I <laughs> spent that time shooting footage and taking pictures on the resort instead of laying out on the beach like I should have been doing. But uh, that being said, we do have some, some pretty neat clips uh, to use as demonstration. So we'll go ahead and jump into Premiere here. You can see here that these video clips are pretty boring. Uh, they're just kind of flat. The contrast is low. Uh, saturation is low. They just don't really pop. And that's the point. That's what S-Log footage is all about. It's about having a flat image that you can take into your editing software and be able to manipulate how you see fit. So first and foremost, uh, when I start color correcting, you want to make sure that you have your Lumetri scopes open. Um, and whatever layout you prefer, that's totally up to you, but you wanna make sure that you have these up so that you're editing accurately and not just going off your eye. So if we look at these scopes on this first clip here, you can see that, like I said, everything is very flat. Uh, everything is kind of living between this 15 to 60 range, uh, and we just kind of want to expand that. So for the basics, what we're gonna do today are use basic correction, curves, and color wheels and match but we are going to get started here in curves. So I will open this up and I am going to use this uh, white curve here, not necessarily going for color, but more going for contrast and light. Uh, and we are just going to add a few points. We'll add four for now. And we're just gonna kinda tweak these and, and see if we can get this to look like a, a normal, bright, vibrant uh, and popping image. What I know for sure based on my Lumetri scopes over here is that I want my black levels to come further down. I want them to be at or close to zero. So I'm gonna bring down the bottom of my scopes here until, or the bottom of my curve here, I should say, until those almost touch zero. So I'll kind of give it a little number like this. I don't wanna make the shadows too dark themselves, so I kinda wanna bring it back somewhere over here. So now for our midtones. Uh, you know, as we see in our scopes here, everything in this image is kind of dark. Uh, so we, in general, kind of want to pull our midtones up a bit. We don't want to blow them out too much, but we just want to get it so that these parts of the image are brighter and kind of pop out from the darkness here. And then we'll continue to work our way up. We'll kind of go back and tweak this as we go, but we just kind of want to get this in a generically good spot. Um, so I'm going to pull my highlights here up as well. Uh, we want these to be pretty dramatically higher because everything is, is pretty dark in this image. Like I said, I didn't expose it as well as I should have. And then we'll take kind of our, our whites end up here and kind of complete this curve. Um, and you'll see that we can kind of pick a different place for it depending on what we're going for. But I think right about here uh, looks pretty good. And keep in mind that we're not going to get all the way to 100, which is typically what you want to do when you're looking at um, your curve. You want your blacks to be at zero. You want your whites to be at 100. But there's nothing really truly white in this image, and we don't want to blow out this background. So it's okay if we're not all the way up at 100. Now, as we can see down here, uh, the bottom of our curve is looking a little weird. So I'm just going to kind of play with this a little uh, so that this looks as smooth as possible. Because if we have this too dark down here, you're just going to get these really harsh shadows that we just don't want. It just kind of takes away from the image. Um, so we want to get enough where we're, we're adding that depth to it, but it's not going to, uh, you know, be too distracting. 
So we'll take our shadows down somewhere around here. And then I'm actually going to add another point for our black levels. That way we can make sure our blacks are all the way down um, at zero. So let's keep it about right here. Now, if we turn this off and back on, you can see this is what we started with and this is what we have now. So already this is looking 10 times better. This is, you know, definitely a usable image for a video. So I'm going to close out my curves and then we are going to go to basic correction just for a second. Now, I usually try to avoid basic correction at all costs. However, when you're using S log footage, all of the saturation is super low and the easiest and best way to adjust that is simply by adjusting your saturation bar in basic correction. Depending on the look that you're going for, um, this kind of can vary, but typically I'll bring my saturation up on S log footage to around 120 to 130. So we'll just kind of play with it here and see what looks good, but we want it to bring out those colors in the background, really make these greens and blues and yellows pop. Um, and yeah, I think that's a, that's a pretty good spot. And it's also important to keep in mind when you're doing stuff like this and editing these clips that you want to pick a frame of your video that's representative of what you're going to be doing. Uh, so, you know, if I kind of scrub through this, the clip doesn't change very much, which is why I'm just editing off the first frame. But if you're doing a shot where you're doing a lot of panning or tilting and or maybe a subject is coming in and out of frame, you want to make sure that you're color correcting for all those different elements and making sure that you kind of find a happy medium to get that clip to look good and fit with the rest of your video. If we go back in here, I think our saturation is pretty good where it is right now. Uh, so we'll close out basic correction and then we will open color wheels and match. Now this is where we can get really fine tuning on our color. And basically I just want to kind of play with this uh, and see what looks good. Um, so our shadows are kind of all over the place. Um, I think because of how much this stuff is in the shadows, kind of these, these darker details on, on the ceiling here, uh, I like that these are kind of yellow. Uh, so if we put it back here, everything's kind of a little blued out. So I think moving the shadows to make them a little warmer, a little more yellow, maybe even add some red to it as well. I think that's gonna really kind of uh, highlight those sections and kind of bring attention to it and not just make it the background. Um, now our midtones will kind of swing around a little bit. I always recommend kind of just going to the extreme and seeing where your midtones are, kind of what pieces of the frame is Premiere considering to be your midtones uh, before you actually try to make your fine adjustments. Uh, so we'll recenter that there. Um, so it appears that our midtones are really kind of like this pole, you know, you have some of these elements in here and then some of the background as well. Um, so this we don't want to play with too much because as midtones tend to do, especially when you don't have a subject in the frame, it'll kind of manipulate a little bit of the whole image. Uh, but I think in general, we want these to be a little warmer as well. Maybe not as severe as our shadows, but we'll just kind of bring that up into the yellow red as well. Now our highlights uh, are basically going to be all these bright spots, all the gaps in the walls uh, between, you know, where there's, where there's not that dark color. I am going to kind of bring my highlights a little more into the blue because I think that's going to create kind of that color contrast uh, between the warm colors, the warm tones that we have everywhere else. So let's go ahead and move on to our next clip here. Uh, and this is another kind of pretty generic clip where everything doesn't really, nothing really changes. Everything's kind of staying the same here. Uh, so we'll just pick a random frame to use. We will go back to our curves and we'll do the same thing. We're just going to create, we'll start out with four points again. Same thing here. It's super flat. So we definitely want to make sure that we are bringing our blacks down, bringing our whites up and kind of spreading out everything in the middle. Um, so I'm going to start by bringing down those shadows and those black levels. Uh, once again, we don't want to go too crazy, but we'll start with something around here for now. Uh, and then let's bring our midtones 
kind of up a little bit. We don't want to boost them too much. You know, we want to be able to see a little more detail in the building back here. Uh, so we'll, we'll pop this up a little bit. And then our highlights, we definitely want to bring up. We want that sky to be bright and vibrant uh, and our whites as well. So we'll kind of do maybe something a little like this, make sure that there's some contrast in there. Um, maybe we can tweak this a little bit as well. Maybe bring this back down uh, and then drop, maybe drop our black levels a little more, kind of snug them in here. Um, bring our shadows down so you get that nice reflection in the water. Uh, and I think this is looking you know, halfway decent. Once again, you don't wanna go crazy because the slightest little changes can make a big difference. I'm just gonna pull this back up a little bit once again to kinda keep that detail in the building. Uh, so I think this looks pretty good. Um, we'll go ahead and show it before and after. Uh, so once again, already making a big difference. Uh, and then we will do saturation again. So back to basic correction. Uh, and this I think could use a good bit of saturation. Obviously we don't wanna crank it all the way up, although that does look kinda of cool. Um, we'll go maybe maybe around 140, cause I do like this being a little more saturated. Um, I think there's a lot of cool colors here and just the this kind of salmon of the building is really nice. So I, I like for that to, to pop. And then once again, we will go to our color wheels and match. And we are going to start with our shadows. So if we kind of swing this around here, you'll see that the shadows are, there's a lot of shadows in the building. Uh, a lot of this down here in the water, this darker part of the water is shadow. Um, so let's see what color we kind of want to make that. And, and some of the trees as well are, are kind of in the shadows. Um, I think I kind of like this to be a little more on like the blue green side uh, to kind of really bring out those trees um, and give a nice little tint to the water down here as well. I think that looks kind of nice. Uh, and then our midtones. Um, so a lot of this is in the building itself. Uh, so I'm going to make this a little more on the warm side, a little more red, uh, maybe red yellow. I don't really want to go to magenta with it. So we'll go somewhere, somewhere around here. I think that looks pretty good. And then our highlights. So our highlights are going to be, uh, pretty much the sky. Um, so since if I reset that, the sky is kind of, you know, obviously it's blue, but I think we can bring out that blue a little more and and uh, make that a little cooler. Uh, so we'll bring that down kind of into those into those dark blues. Um, and keep in mind, this is going to affect a little bit of the water and the beach and stuff as well. So we do wanna be subtle with it. And just to keep in mind too, if you are going more in depth on your color correction, what you can do is go back to curves and make individual adjustments to your red, green, and blue based on that color in the different areas of light. So if you wanna be more specific, I would definitely recommend using your curves. Curves are your best friend when it comes to color correcting. Uh, but yeah, you just want to, to do what's comfortable for you. I'm just doing this relatively quickly. This isn't anything that's going into a, a professional project, but you know, this is a way that I will edit footage, especially on bigger projects where I'm just trying to get everything to look the same and more color correct before I go into that finite detailing and grading. So I think that looks pretty good for our second clip here. Uh, and then we will go over to our last clip. So this is just obviously some palm trees, nice little swaying in the breeze. Uh, so we will go back into our curves. Same thing, we need to kind of stretch this out. I think you guys are kind of getting the idea by now. So I will bring my shadows down. Um, and obviously there's not a ton of shadow in this image. It's really just kind of these darker parts of the trees, uh, you know, the shadows within the leaves, but we do want to bring that down to get some contrast out of it. Our midtones, we want to probably bump up a little bit, 
but we might actually want to bring them down. So we're going to leave that alone for now. And let's go to kind of our highlights and our, our whites here. So we definitely want to bring these up. We want to, you know, give some light to this sky uh, and, and get our white levels up as well. So I think something like this looks really nice. Um, really brings out the blue, brings out the sky, uh, add some, add some depth to the image. So I was originally kind of swinging this way on the, the mid tones and kind of the, the higher end of the shadows here, but I'm kind of leaning towards bringing them darker. I think this gives kind of more of a nice contrast, uh, and really kind of makes, makes the trees pop, uh, gives them a little, a little bit more depth. Uh, and then I'll just kind of tweak everything around to kind of smooth this out a little bit. Um, let's see, bring, maybe bring our shadows down a little bit more. Uh, let's see, something like this, I think looks pretty nice. Uh, so there's before and there's after. Um, yeah, I think that, I think that looks pretty good. So once again, we will jump over to basic correction and I am going to bring this saturation up. We'll do this around 130. Uh, kind of make those trees pop, bring some more color to the sky. And then color wheels and match, uh, we will start with our shadows again. So remember our shadows are kind of in these dark parts of the trees and the shadows with the branches and everything. Um, so we'll kind of we'll kind of toy with this. With trees, I kind of like having a combination of like greens and yellows. Um, cause I think having the kind of the, the warmer shadows and then having those, the green that kind of pops on the highlights is kind of a nice look. So I think in the shadows, I'm going to kind of bring these more to a, a yellow orange, uh, and kind of just get a little bit more detail in the color there. And then I'll go over to midtones, uh, and midtones. We'll kind of see what this is affecting here. Uh, so a good bit of the sky. Uh, and some of the trees as well. So I think I'm gonna move this down into kind of the green cyan kind of range here and really just uh, bring some more color to the trees, to the sky. And then our highlights, of course, are, are more in that sky again, more that real bright part of the image, some of the tips of the leaves and then uh, uh, the you know the whites of the clouds. So I think this I kind of want to be a little more of a, a darker blue, maybe leaning almost towards magenta. Um, maybe somewhere in there, I think looks pretty solid to me. So let's go ahead and check these out from what we started with to what we have now. As you can see, super flat image, and all of a sudden, boom all sorts of color, contrast, everything is just really popping. Same thing here. Uh, we just took something that was super flat and really just brought it to life. And then our palm trees here as well. I love color correcting this footage because it's a ton of fun. It is a lot more work than color correcting, you know, just your day-to-day -day footage that comes out of a typical camera. Um, but you can just do so much more with this. Like I, I didn't really go crazy and like, you know, do super intense grades to this and, and make it very artsy. You know, I just kind of wanted to make the footage pop, bring it to life, uh, and, you know, make it, make it a good clip that you can use to, to post on Instagram or, you know, whatever you want to do with it. So thank you guys for joining us today. I hope you learned a little bit about my methods for color correcting S-Log3 footage. If you like this video, if you learned something, make sure you drop a like, that would be awesome. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so that you find out when we drop our new videos. So thank you guys again for watching. I really appreciate all the support and we'll see you next time.